Hi there, my name is Gregory Adam Scott, and this is my game, Armored Commander, the World War II Tank Commander Roguelike. This is another preview of Alpha 5. I'm getting very close to being finished with this version. The only two things left I have uh, that I want to add before releasing Alpha 5 uh, are restricted um, types of ammo, so that's HCBI for the 75mm and HVAP for the 76mm. And then finally, I've just dis temporarily disabled the high scores display. I'll put that back in before I do the final release. So, uh, in this playthrough, uh, I'm going to move a little bit faster than my last one, assuming that uh, most of the basic game mechanics and systems were already introduced. If I run into something that's new, then I'll slow down a little bit and and, uh, and talk about it and introduce it a little bit more. So let's start a new campaign. Yes, intro text. We'll name our Sherman the Caribou. Uh, this is new in Alpha 5. This is the combat calendar, so you can play through um, several days of combat, I believe, up until the beginning of September. And in the, the later versions of the game, you'll have uh, several months of campaign time that you can play through. Um, but for the for the meantime, you can play through about um, just over yeah just over a month a month and a bit of uh, of campaign time. So on the first day of combat, you're always called up. On later days, depending on what type of action you're going to see, there's a random chance of actually seeing combat or not. Um, this is new as well. You can there's an interface um, in the combat journal uh, screen where you can view your tank. And depending on whether you're called up for action or not, you either could begin the day or you can proceed to the next day. So let's begin the combat day. Um, here is the here is the dawn briefing screen, uh, same as in Alpha 4. New in Alpha 5 is that depending on the type of scenario for the day, the resistance, the average resistance in the areas you run into can vary between light, medium, and heavy. In this case, on the first day of combat, um, it's light. So that will affect the number and types of units that we encounter um, when we when we actually run into a battle. So let's set up our tank. I'll load some smoke rounds. Actually I don't want that many smoke rounds in the ready rack and then I'll start loading high explosive and AP and I'll want four AP in the ready rack and fill up the rest. Don't know if I'll actually get a chance to use these during the combat day, but it's always better to have them and not need them than to need them and not have them. So there we go. The ammo is loaded. Um, leave the hatches open for now, uh, and we're ready to go. So we head to the start area. Now, I didn't mention this last time, but um, if you've played a lot of roguelikes, it was probably clear to you just from looking at it, is that this map, the campaign map, is randomly generated on every campaign day. So each time you play it, it'll look a little differently. The types of areas will be the same. You'll have things like villages, fields, fields and uh, farmhouses, and woods. But their exact layout and the locations of the inter entrance and exit areas and the roads connecting them uh, will be different. So every time you come into a new campaign map, you should definitely take a look around, uh, see what's here, and kind of plan out your route as, as to where you want to proceed. So my first action is check an adjacent area to get an idea of what kind of resistance I might expect. This is a free action which you get at the start of every day. My plan here is to try to get on this dirt road, then connect up with this improved road, and then ride it all the way up to the, near the exit point. So let's check this area. Light resistance, that sounds good. So I'm going to enter that area and see if I run into any real resistance. No resistance, so I get two victory points for capturing it. Good so far. Let's do another check. Medium resistance. Now, because I'm still on the stock um, basic M4 with the A turret, I don't have a lot of armor and I don't have a very good gun. Um, the Sherman wasn't really designed to take on other tanks head to head. And when the American and Commonwealth forces landed in Normandy, they ran into much heavier um, armored resistance than they were expecting. And a lot of these Shermans um, found it very difficult to advance. So in Armored Commander as well, your priority should be survival. You uh, especially with the early tanks, you can't necessarily go head-to-head -head with a panther or a tiger or even a king tiger and uh, expect to live unless you are very, very lucky. So in this case, I'm going to go with the idea that discretion is a better part of valor, and I'm going to call, call in artillery as I move in. Successful, I move into the area and ends up being no resistance. But if there were, then I would have had an extra attack. I'll mention one thing. I'm still testing Alpha 5. I hope to work out all the bugs. Um, but I've actually recorded about three Let's Plays in the past that were all ended by game crashing bugs. 
I've decided this time to play through no matter what. So if the game ends, uh, I'll take a look at the code and see if I can fix it really quickly. If I can't, unfortunately, it'll be a premature end uh, to this video. But uh, let's see if we can't get lucky. So check adjacent area. Let's check this one. Light resistance. Sounds good. Let's move in. No resistance. So, so far, no battles. I've gotten pretty lucky. Again, expected resistance for the day is light, so it's relatively unlikely that I'm going to run into a battle. Uh, I expect to run into at least one, if not a few more, before I reach the exit area. So let's continue. Check this area. Medium resistance. Bring in artillery. Unable. Move into the area. And luckily, no resistance. So, so far, so good. Now, the next move I want to make is to try to get onto this road. And I think I want to ride it up uh, up here through the town toward my exit area. So do another check. Medium resistance. Good chance to bring our artillery. Successful. Battle encounter is, in, is triggered. So I get my first battle. There's medium resistance in this area, but luckily I did call in artillery, so I'm going to get that initial attack. So let's go to the battle screen. What am I facing? AT gun, light weapons, and a PSW or SPW. So that's either a uh, sort of a scout car, like a light armored car, or a troop transport, uh, like a Hanna Mag um, half track. And I won't know it yet until until I can identify it. Um, so of these, it's the AT gun that's really the worry for me because even the lightest of the German AT guns would have a really easy time uh, slicing through my armor. So I'm going to try to deal with that first. But before anything else happens, I get my artillery fire. So let's see what the results are. Destroyed, smoked, and nothing on the AT gun, which is unfortunate. Um, now, there's always a random roll at the beginning of combat to see if you're ambushed. It's about 70% chance that you will be ambushed. So the idea is that your battle group is moving along into the area. Artillery is raining down. Um, but before you have a chance to react, the defending units, because they are in place, um, get the first attack on you. So let's see what happens. AT gun fires at a friendly tank to no effect. SPG didn't seem to do anything. And then another SPG pops up. No, the the PS sorry the PSW, so the PSW SPW didn't do anything. And there were reinforcements, so an, an unknown SPG has popped up. Luckily, it's within smoke. Now, because it's covered by smoke, I think this AT gun is still the greatest threat. So I'm going to get my loader, who can only spot in one sector because he doesn't have a hatch uh, to spot directly in front. So let's see what happens with spotting. So I spotted an unidentified SPG, no other results. Unfortunately, I didn't spot this AT gun. So at the moment, um, I believe he can attack me, but I can't attack him. So that is a really bad place to be in. And there's some SPG, but I don't know exactly what it is. So I'm a little worried at this point. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get my commander to throw a smoke grenade out of the open hatch. I'm going to button up the driver and assistant driver, and I'm going to hit the driver to try to reverse to haul down. Now, it's a bit of a uh, it's a bit of a compromise here because ideally I'd have my commander directing movement that would increase my chance of successfully moving back and trying to um, increase the distance between me and the AT gun. But I think in this case smoke, throwing a smoke grenade is more impo uh, important because I know I can succeed in doing that and I'll lay down a smoke factor on my own hex. Uh, if I do end up reversing then at least the smoke factor will be in front of me um, so that it should still count. Um, but in fact, I think if I do end up moving backwards, then both the AT gun and the SPG will be moved off, off the map. As I said, um, especially with the early Shermans, um, you would, it's very risky to try to take these on, especially two at a time in a one-on-one -on -one battle. Uh, at this point, it's much better to try to move away. Or at least um, throw as much smoke and make it as difficult as possible for them to hit you. So, uh, commander's open hatch, which he needs to do in order to, to toss out the smoke grenade. Uh, the gunner are, uh, isn't going to do anything because we're going to try to move, so let's see what happens. Unable to move, but at least I dropped smoke. I had a friendly tank destroyed. AT gun was taken out. It's good. And everything else was taken out by friendly action. So I think in this case, uh, the, last, the very last um, action there was the random events, so that was an uh, enemy attack. Um, might have been an enemy artillery attack, which damaged some of my friendly forces. So luckily, um, in total, a net gain of five victory points. And I survived, which in the end, especially in the early game, is the more important thing. So areas captured. Let's keep moving along the road. Light resistance. Don't need artillery for that. Didn't actually run into any resistance, so that's good. Let's check the next road area. Medium resistance. 
Um, and take a look at my time. So it's currently 1245, six and a half hours till sunset. I can afford to spend the time trying to call in artillery. So call in artillery, not possible. Move into the area and battle encounter. So I tried to bring in artillery. I wasn't successful. Now I have to uh, enter the battle without that extra initial attack. SPG at close range, a tank of some kind, and an HE gun. This is a little scary. Let's see what happens in the first ambush. Fires at, a lead, at the friendly lead tank, no effect. Shifts position, doesn't do anything. Spotting, let's tell him to spot straight ahead because there's two units here. Unidentified SPG, AT gun. Tank is hidden, that's good. At least it, it can't attack me. So there's an SPG, I don't know what it is, but I can fire at it, and there's an AT gun. Uh, again, I don't know what it is, but I can fire it at in the woods. And this one is in the open. It has a front facing. Most of the German SPGs have quite good front armor. So if I'm trying to do an AP attack against its front armor, it's not often going to succeed. I think in this case, again, what I'm going to try to do is same as last time. Toss a smoke grenade out of the open hatch and try to move, hull, uh, try to move backwards, hopefully, into a hull down position. So... Reverse to hull down, especially with this AT gun on the side. Um, if possible, I want to get it into my front arc, so at least I have a chance of, uh, of surviving a direct hit. So, and in this case, let's see what we have. I think in this case I'm going to switch to AP because there's two armored targets and one un unarmored target. So let's get the loader to change the gun load. Unfortunately, that means he can't spot in the next turn, but um, that's a sacrifice that I'm willing to make. And Gunner's not going to do anything because there's nothing for him to do right now. So, change the shell in the main gun to AP, wasn't able to move back. SPG is destroyed, smoked, and in the random event phase, um, enemy artillery fire is raining down. Now this has a chance of killing um, uh, friendly infantry units. Because my commander has an open hatch, he might get injured as well. Let's hope he's not. No effect on my tank. Good. Alright, so, let's see. He is hidden, so I don't even have a chance to spot him, and unidentified, so let's have the loader spot over here to see if he can identify. No, no results. So tank is still hidden at this point, AT gun. So it ended up being a bit of a mistake to change my gun load to AP, because it would be nice to lob an HE shell right over there. So what am I going to do in this turn? Let's get the commander to direct movement from the open hatch and try again to reverse the hull down. With the commander directing movement, um, at least I do get the bonus to reversing, so I might be able to move my tank backwards, which would shift the position of these enemy units up. So let's see if it works. It did, so that's good. Enemy tank fires, AT gun doesn't do anything, ends up being destroyed. Uh, new unit shows up, which is a PSW, SPW again, either a scout car or a Hanomag. So, not too bad. Uh, tank now, however, is not hidden, it's just unknown. So it is my highest priority, and I want to try to spot it. No, it ends up being hidden, and I spotted a SPW, which is a like a Hanomag um, armored personnel carrier. So let's see if we can't take that out um, with direct fire, because the tank at least has to move in the next turn before it can even do uh, a shot at me. It's assumed that there's some kind of terrain in between here that's blocking a uh, direct line of sight. So I'm loaded with AP. Um, I believe with these sort of lightly armored um, vehicles, AP is still the way to go. Let's make sure that I'm going to reload with AP, and we'll do it from the ready rack. Why not? Because this tank is not an immediate uh, threat. So commander is going to leave his hatch open. He's going to direct main gun fire. Gunner is going to rotate, fire the gun. Loader is going to load as he does. Um, driver is going to stop. Assistant driver isn't going to do anything. So basically, we're turning the turret. Um, one sector and then firing at medium range. So let's see how that goes. Turn the turret. Turret's good. Got our target. Let's fire. Three or less. Missed. I maintain rate of fire, however. So uh, I'm going to get a, um, a minus one minus one modifier for um, for uh, acquired target in the next turn, and I won't have the rotated turret. Um, so it'll, it'll end up being a, a minus two. So that means that I should need a five or less, which is much more doable. So fire again, five or less. Hit, maintain rate of fire so I can fire off another one. 
And in my next shot, I'm going to have target acquired two, which means I should need a six or, six or less. And that's as good as I can do until I lose this, uh, this moving penalty here. So still have two AP shells in the ready rack. Let's fire off another one. Missed. Rate of fire is over. So that means now I find out what happened with those attacks on the, uh, on the Henemag. I needed less than 12 to destroy it. It was going to get destroyed. Um, very light armor. It was hit in the turret, which in this case, I mean, these don't really have turrets. It just means sort of the upper structure of the vehicle as opposed to the lower structure. Um, so very lightly armored. AP shell ripped right through it and destroyed it. Hidden tank doesn't do anything. That's good. It remains hidden. Artillery fire. One squad is, is just destroyed. And luckily my commander was not uh, destroyed. So right now I want to destroy some stuff. I'm going to go head on at this tank and see what I can do. I've got AP loaded. Um, loader. I'm, don't, I'm not going to fire. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw some more AP shells into the ready rack. And let's try to get forward into a haul down position. And I'm going to rotate the turret just so that it's facing forward um, on my next turn. So that's good. New facing for the turret. Facing forward. Done. Uh, move shells into the ready rack. It's the same key interface as, um, as uh, any other time. For example, during the campaign day or during the combat journal when you see your tank um, interface here. Um, and let's throw a couple more AP shells in. Now... Um, it's not that clear currently, and I probably should have some kind of a pop-up window for this because it is pretty important. The, in the movement phase, uh, sir, at the end of the orders phase, when you actually start doing your actions, um, the tank was able to move forward into a hull-down position, but it didn't move far enough so that um, this tank would actually move into a different into a different hex. So because he didn't move into a different hex, so I've moved I moved forward a little bit, but because these ranges are on the order of like a quarter mile. Um, I didn't actually move forward enough so that he has shifted into the next hex down. But I am hull down, which is excellent, which means any fire coming in that would have normally hit my hull has absolutely no effect. Um, and that's always good. So I've put some more shells into the ready rack. That's good for me. Hidden tank doesn't do anything. And it ends up being destroyed. And now we have a truck to deal with, um, which I should hopefully be able to take out pretty quickly. So let's try to spot it. Spotted. Um, Trucks don't need to buy, be identified. It's only tanks, SPGs, and AT guns that need to be identified. W other units, as soon as you spot them, you pretty much know what they are. So trucks, extremely lightly armored. Um, let's just try to take it out. So gunner is going to fire. Commander is going to direct main gunfire, so I have a better chance at hitting. Um, driver's going to stop, and I should be able to keep hull down status, um, but I lose moving status, obviously, because I have to stop in order to fire. Yes, that worked well. So direct fire mode, because I'm using AP. Fire away. I hit. Um, and so base is 6, plus 2 because the, the target is moving, minus 1 because my commander was directing. So that's a net uh, dice roll modifier of plus 1, which means instead of a 6 to hit, I needed a 5. I did get a 5. In my next turn, I'll need a 6. And then turn after that, I'll need a 7 as I acquire the target. Maintain rate of fire. Let's do another one. Missed. And so I only get that one AP hit, and it crashed. That's unfortunate. Let's assume that I destroyed the truck and it was a great success. And for now, yeah, it's just, it's a problem. Yeah, the, the, the crash was due to a problem in uh, displaying the armor for the, uh, for the truck. I think that's because it's unarmored. So I'm going to uh, start to fix that right now. But thanks very much for watching my video, and uh, uh, I look forward to being able to release Alpha 5 and recording a new video um, to show you the final versions of, uh, of, of this edition of Armored Commander. So thanks very much.